Hi, my name is Rebecca Fitzhugh, and today I will show you how to use Rubrik to provide continuous data protection for your high value applications. So today I will demonstrate a near zero recovery point objective or RPO by restoring a virtual machine to the latest CDP recovery point of only just a few seconds ago. Additionally, we'll take a look at the prerequisites and the two step configuration process required to get CDP going in your Rubrik environment. So let's get started. CDP provides a near zero RPO in VMware environments. So to begin, let's take a look at a vSphere virtual machine with continuous protection enabled. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just create a text file on the desktop. We're going to go ahead and specify the time. So 1114 AM. We'll go ahead and save that. Now, at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and hop over to the rubric UI. Now, my virtual machine is appropriately named CDP, so let's search for that, and we see my Windows VM. Now, notice on the overview pane, the indication that the virtual machine is actively protected by CDP, and you can also see which protection policy, called an SLA domain, is applied. The recovery points calendar allows you to select a specific point in time to restore, or you can search by file name across all points in time. For this example, let's go ahead and select today's date to see what recovery points are available. So these dots up at the top, these indicate in a completed, scheduled, or on-demand snapshot. And this shaded section here indicates a continuous stream of recovery points provided by Rubrik's journal-based approach. So this enables you to roll back to an exact point in time and minimize data loss in the event of failure, data corruption, or a ransomware attack. So let's actually input a time from, let's say, 10 minutes ago. So we said that it is 1114 when we created that text file. So let's put in 1104 AM. And then let's go ahead and choose to create a live mount. A live mount is a clone of the virtual machine from the point in time that I selected. So go ahead and choose an ESXi host and mount. Now this point in time should not contain the text file on the desktop. So let's also choose to do a live mount of the latest point in time, which should include the text file on the desktop. Let's go ahead and choose latest, mount virtual machine, Similar process, choose an ESXi host, and mount. Now we see in the activities pane that these tasks have already begun. We can also navigate over to live mounts and then vSphere VMs to view the status. So we see that we do have one powered on, and we have one that's still mounting. But overall, we see that it took just a few seconds for us to be able to recover. So voila, in less than a minute, we've got two live mounts running. Okay, so I've logged into our two live mounts. So we see our live mount from 11.04 a.m., which was 10 minutes before I created the text file, has no text file on the desktop. And we see our recovery point from the latest recovery time does contain that text file that we created only moments before creating that live mount. So now that we've seen CDP in action, let's actually take a moment to see how to configure this natively integrated feature. Now that we're back in the rubric UI, let's take a look at the two steps required for configuring CDP. First, install the CDP IO filter. And secondly, toggle the slider in the SLA domain. So to install the CDP filter, navigate to the settings menu, and then select your vCenter servers. Select which vCenter server you want to use and go ahead and navigate to the particular cluster. So we do see that the CDP filter has been enabled and installed on our production cluster, but now we want to go ahead and install this on our test cluster. So choose the ellipsis next to the cluster to install the CDP filter. 
CDP uses the vSphere API for IO filtering to allow us to capture IO on the IO stream of a VM. So now that the CDP filter has been installed on our vSphere cluster, the next step is to enable CDP on an SLA domain. To do so, navigate to SLA domains and then local domains. In this case, we want to go ahead and take a look at an existing SLA domain. So I'm going to select it and hit edit. Within protection policies, I can specify snapshot frequency and retention and not worry about job scheduling for backup and expiry. Notice that CDP is a simple toggle and then you'll simply specify the retention of the continuous recovery points. Under remote policies, if replication is configured, then CDP data will also be replicated. Because an SLA domain is a declarative policy, once I apply it to an object, then all of the lifecycle orchestration is scheduled and automatically managed to meet my desired outcomes. I can assign this policy as broadly or as granularly as required by my use case, from the vCenter server level all the way down to the individual tag or virtual machine. In this demonstration, you saw that we were able to provide near zero RPO for a virtual machine through the use of continuous data protection. Additionally, you saw the very simple two-step configuration process required to enable CDP. First, install the I.O. filter, and then secondly, toggle and enable CDP in your SLA domain. For more information about Rubrik or CDP, please visit rubrik.com.